So the heart, in the heart, you have the aorta, you have the brachiocephalic artery, which then branches <laughs> into the right subclavian artery and the right common carotid. Here you have the left common carotid, and here the left subclavian. So in the arterial system, there's just this, the brachiocephalic artery. We don't really have a right and a left. Okay? Now if we come over here and we look at the venous, the venous drainage, you have the jugular vein on the right and on the left. You have the, the right subclavian vein and the left subclavian vein. But look at what's happening here. The two veins, the jugular vein and the right subclavian vein, come together to form the right brachiocephalic vein. And the jugular vein and the left subclavian, so the left jugular vein and the left subclavian vein come together to form the left brachiocephalic vein. That's like one of my very favorites for the lab practical, so just be aware of that. And then together, they form the superior vena cava. Okay, the other arteries to know here besides the, the, the left and right common carotid would be this one, that's the superior thyroid, and veins, that's the uh, inferior thyroid vein. Okay, now the aorta continues down into the thorax and gives off branches as it goes to the structures in the thorax. So the thymus, for example, and the, the, there are arteries that go out to the ribs, but they're not shown on the model. Let me point out to you here what's going on in the lung. So this is a pulmonary vessel, and it's red. And here's a pulmonary vessel, and it's blue. The convention is that, uh, for the convention for drawing models, is that arterial blood is uh, not necessarily red, oxygenated blood is red. So when blood is carrying oxygen, they color the vessel red. When blood is carrying, when the oxygen has been used up, then they color the vessel uh, blue. So here, this vessel, this vein, is carrying deoxygenated blood because it's been used up by the structures in the head. In the lung, though, remember that the blood coming to the lung has not yet been oxygenated. So that's actually an artery and that's a vein, okay? So now we enter the, 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 the abdominal cavity as, as the aorta pierces the diaphragm. We have the, the celiac trunk, the superior mesenteric artery, and the inferior mesenteric artery, and of course the renal artery and vein. I don't think anybody's gonna be too challenged by that, and here, this artery is the gonadal artery. So if it's a, a, a female, the gonadal artery usually stops about here, and that's because it's the ovarian artery in a female. In a male, it continues on into the scrotum, and it's the testicular artery in the male. But if I ask you on the practicals, just say gonadal, and that covers both male and female, and we're good to go. Okay, so celiac trunk, superior mesenteric, and inferior mesenteric. This is the common iliac artery. It gives off a branch that goes into the pelvis, which you can't see very well. Let me turn it for you. That's here. That's the hypogastric artery. And remember, we, we agreed, or at least I agreed, which is pretty much the same deal, <laughs> that uh, we were going to call that the hypogastric. So don't call it the internal iliac. If you do that in the operating room, people won't know what you're talking about. This is the external iliac, so common, hypogastric, external, and the external iliac, once it p passes into the leg, becomes the femoral artery. Now all of these arteries have veins along with them, but they're not shown. So, for example, is there a hypogastric vein? Of course there is, but it isn't shown on the model. All right? Okay, that's it. What are your questions?